to Padre Toby. Gurmila Margaret, um, alas, can Cordia. Um, Ara, I understand obviously what this bill is seeking to do, and we, un we support the objective of the bill in this case. Um, we obviously have no choice, but the law has to be changed in this area, obviously because of the current practices deemed unconstitutional. Um, and all minors should be treated equally uh, under the law uh, when considering their age. Um, that's a really important issue for sure. But it, just a, there's a couple of issues that lead into what's happening here. So we see that some minors are involved in criminal activity and the, um, the, the, the penalty, if you like, uh, does not arise until after the eight, they're 18 years old. And the big question here is, why does it take so long for the criminal justice system to work in Ireland? Uh, we had the uh, Taunish to Micheál Martin very recently uh, make the comparison between the criminal justice system in Britain and in Ireland saying that individuals uh, who were uh, involved in criminal activities were jailed within a matter of weeks in Britain, while in Ireland uh, it can take a matter of years. And obviously this High Court decision is as a result of the slowness of the wheels of justice to turn in this country. And that's a really significant problem. And if we're honest about it, one of the big reasons is because of the lack of resources within the court system in this country. There isn't enough judges, there aren't enough barristers, and there certainly aren't enough guardi uh, within the system, which is leading to uh, very, very slow um, decisions being made in terms of the criminal, criminal justice system uh, in Ireland. Um, I do want to say that uh, I don't want to see children criminalised at all in this country, and I want to see a situation where children are given every chance to reform their ways if they have been involved in criminal activity. Uh, because it is the case that some children uh, participate in criminal activity um, you know, just through circumstance, often through the, uh, the background that they're from in terms of disadvantage, uh, etc. And many, if given the chance, will go on to leave, leave uh, you know, fulfilled, uh, positive lives within society. Uh, but I do believe there has to be a cost as well in terms of children involved in criminal activity. For if there's no cost over time whatsoever, we're, we're actually we're telling a lie to those children that there is a, a consequence-free uh, reality to their criminal activity. And just you know, a couple of months ago, I held a public meeting in Meath um, around the issue of crime and antisocial behaviour. And a number of women attended the meeting. They said that uh, in their own shops, uh, children are involved in stealing um, within those shops. And when the women go to challenge those children, um, those children say that if they go to the Gardaí, they will rape those women on the way home, uh, which is obviously a very, very serious threat uh, to be made. And as a result, some of those women are actually um, getting lifts to and from work now. They can't walk to work anymore for fear of that threat being, unf being, being fulfilled. Um, so we have to ask ourselves a question, the criminal justice system needs to be able to deal with uh, children who have been involved in numerous convictions over time. And there has to be, I believe, a graduated penalty system in place to deter children from getting involved uh, in uh, crime, and especially from the ages of 16 and 17 years old uh, as well. And we know, we know that in our, in our communities, children are being used by criminal organisations to carry out actions because it is understood that they're nearly immune from uh, the type of convictions that adults will be involved in. And I do think that we have to, we have to grapple with that issue um, of a graduated uh, response to criminal activity uh, uh, for children 15, 16 and 17 years of age. I want to concur with um, uh, Deputy Howland in relation to the uh, gap that this, potential, this bill potentially leaves uh, around the clarity of law that will be used in the cases of um, um, murder uh, in this situation. And I do think that there should be very, very clearly laid out legislative uh, response to uh, children under the age of 18 uh, who are involved uh, in, in murder in, in these scenarios. I do think there's, there's obviously gaps around the issue of um, um, what we do in terms of uh, penalties and what kind of, um, how long people should spend in jail for, for their activities. Uh, we do have a major problem in this country in terms of certain individuals who carry out grievous crime 
uh, and do not s receive a custodial sentence for it. And I know obviously there is a separation of powers, uh, etc. And I won't mention any particular uh, cases in this scenario. But there are individuals who have been brought to court uh, for, you know, hardcore pornography, uh, you know, uh, child hardcore pornography and receive suspended sentences. Uh, individuals who have really damaged uh, other individuals and have suspended sentences. And I know we have obviously a judicial council who's involved in obviously creating advice to judges in terms of um, uh, penalties and custodial sentences. But there needs to be speed in terms of making sure that we have proper deterrence within law within custodial sentences for those who participate in extreme, violent and grievous crime. And we don't have this at the moment. And I think a part of that goes down to the fact that every year, your staff minister selects people who are in prison and takes them out of prison because of the fact that the prisons are overcrowded. In response to a parliamentary question I've, I've sent to you, you, you have admitted that your staff release prisoners because of the fact that those prisons are overcrowded. Um, and we want to do everything we can to divert children away from crime. But there has to become a point where children who are involved in grievous crime uh, have a penalty. And that must mean uh, also a custodial sentence too. Um, there's no doubt in my mind as well that one of the, the, the issues that's leading to the spike in murder, the spike in crime at the moment is the lack of Gardaí. Every year that you've been Minister for Justice, there has been a fall in the number of Gardaí in this state. Every day, more and more Gardaí are actually resigning and retiring. Every day, Gardaí are being attacked currently in this country. There is a breakdown in the criminal justice system, which is leading to a situation that some criminals feel that they can get away with murder with impunity. Uh, if necessary, and I think that's a very, very serious issue. So I just go back to the, the, the core point here, Minister. For absolutely certain, we want to make sure that children are not treated uh, as the same as adults in terms of grievous uh, crime. Uh, that children must be given opportunities to reform um, their ways and to be diverted from the criminal justice system. Um, but there is a weakness, I think, in this law in terms of how it uh, sets out exactly how we're going to treat murder uh, carried out by uh, uh, children under the age of 18. Uh, and also, I do think there's a weakness in this government's whole approach to children with multiple convictions for serious crime uh, and how we can actually have a penalty which um, at least pushes those children uh, away from that type of activity and keeps citizens safe in this country. Gaurav Margot.